The question that I'm asking myself often is, if the CTBTU didn't exist, how would be our world? You wouldn't know how to detect a nuclear test explosion. It's been that people could be carrying a nuclear test explosion. Because the fear that you might be detected is already a deterrent for you to try and do a nuclear test explosion. grateful and proud to be the Secretary General of the UN at this historical moment. As depository of the treaty, I will perform my functions and partially guided by the provision of the treaty. Our mission is urgent to ensure that the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty enters into force as early as possible so as to achieve the international community's long-standing goal of outlawing all nuclear tests.
Middle East, you know, all the countries in the Middle East are participating. When I say all, you take Israel, Egypt, Iran, they're all participating to the Comprehensive Nuclear Test on Treaty because they're signature of the treaty. And, uh, you know, we would welcome their ratification the same way we welcome the ratification of Saudi Arabia or Syria. Okay? I don't want to focus only on the annex to country because every single ratification of the CTBT makes it universal. And when the treaty is universal, I mean, whoever is not part of it uh, feels isolated. So our job is to make sure we secure as much and as many ratification and signature as possible. And with 184 signature, I think we pretty, pretty good. What we have to do is to get those uh, uh, remaining ratification for the entry into force. But with 168, our target was hopefully to reach 170 by the end of the year, and then hopefully prepare the ground for many more to come. Two percent of the international monitoring system completed, 
We've proven that our detection threshold is goes far beyond what was anticipated, even with the 100%. And that's due to many factors. Development, recent development in science and technology, the evolution of the sensors, and um, also the great cooperation from the state operate, from the station operators and uh, people we're working with because they learn more because we've made a lot of effort to build capacity in places where we've uh, we have uh, facilities of the international monitoring system so that maintenance is done well operation is done well and then data availability is at the highest uh, with regard to the treaty provision değerli kardeşler her şey iyi güzel de Birilerinin elinde nükleer başlıklı füze var. Bir tane iki tane değil. Ama benim elimde nükleer başlıklı füze olmasın. Ben bunu kabul etmiyorum. Şu anda dünyada gelişmiş ülkeler içerisinde neredeyse nükleer başlıklı füzesi olmayan ülke yok. Hepsinde var. doesn't rely on station in one specific country. We have a network of stations that are spread around the planet. Station might not be working in a country, but if you're looking for clouds or possible radio isotope, the cloud could move from one country to another and then hit one of the stations that could be of relevance if you're looking for a detection. Countries would consider signature ratification if they believe in the international monitoring system, the international data center, and the mechanism for site infection, inspection to complete the verification regime and the build-up. Uh, if there is any doubt that we could uh, miss a nuclear test explosion or an event that could be a potential nuclear test explosion, the people wouldn't believe in the IMS, they wouldn't, believe, they wouldn't believe in the IDC, in the OSI mechanism, and then they would say, why should we ratify a treaty and be bound to something that is not working? So our job is to prove that, yes, the treaty is verifiable because we have a solid IMS, a solid IDC, and then we're able to distribute data to state the signatory of the CTBG for them to make their own decision. And that's what we try to do.